My name is Elizabeth Shepherd. Um, I have uh, travelled all the way down from London today um, to uh, be here with you. Um, and uh, I hopefully am going to share some of our, um, our practical examples about how we're using some of the theories and some of the research that you guys are doing um, in a commercial contextual uh, concept. And actually, I've just been at a, the uh, disaster recovery presentation by Pavel, which actually was very interesting. It's a completely different um, to my world. You know, he's dealing with serious things like you know, famine and hunger and earthquakes, and I'm dealing with um, money. So it's very humbling uh, to go to that presentation. Um, but actually, you know, there's a lot of um, what was very clear to me in that presentation is, you know, there's a lot of you know, while the two worlds are nothing alike, there are a lot of them. It's all rooted in the same theory. So it's all rooted in the same context, the same theory, and the same ideas. It's just the application that varies, that varies different from uh, different places, different places. So I want you to sort of bear that in mind, um, and I'm on the career thing later, but I think it's, it's very important to remember it's, it's ensuring that you understand the theory and understand the processes behind um, uh, OR and analytics and data, and then it's also then how you apply that in the real world. Um, okay, and again, the difference between me and uh, Pavel is um, he does a lot of fantastic uh, modelling, but he hopes never has to be used in the real world, right? So we hope that we never have a big disaster, we have to use it. Whereas I kind of hope that things happen that I can then go and play and I actually get to play with all my simulations and then see actually what happens. So he has a far harder job than I do, so um, maybe I'll stop there. So, all right, so that's a little bit about that. And um, a little bit about me. Um, I, uh, at university, I studied information systems, so some uh, reason in theory, but mine was applied, so it was a lot to do with um, business and economics as well. So, background was very much in that. Um, I left university and uh, started work at British Airways um, in their e commerce uh, part of their organisation, which is really where I've then uh, taken this forward uh, from um, and ended up at hotels.com. I've been at hotels.com for um, a few years. Uh, it's actually my seventh year coming up this year, so, so quite a while um, now. Um, and um, I've actually seen a fantastic evolution in terms of uh, data. Um, one of the big key successes for Hotels.com has been is that data has been at the centre um, of our of our world um, since I started, um, and that goes all the way up from all the way down up uh, from the CEO all the way through the business. Um, we actually have um, again sort of linking to my career thing, but we actually have most of the people that get recruited into our organisation actually have an analytics test before they kind of arrive. So it's very much the heart and soul of what we do, um, and we're very passionate about it. So enough of that. Let's get on to some detail. Um, one of my uh, uh, things is what are we? Hotels.com. Um, some of you may have heard of us, some of you may not. So just a little bit of an idea. We're part of um, a bro broader group called Expedia. Um, most of you probably have heard of Expedia. And um, it's made up, Expedia Inc. as a whole is made up of a few brands, including Expedia.com, .co you've hopefully seen it around, Hotels.com, an Italian company called Venere. Um, we've acquired Trivago recently, so they, they, I know they have a lot of adverts online, so you've heard of that. We're a global organisation, and we have a very strong UK presence. This is Hotels.com explicitly, and we've actually just been placed in one of the uh, top 100 best companies to work for in the UK. Uh, by the Sunday Times magazine, so we're all very proud of that, so I'll have to put that on there. Um, a little bit more into the detail, um, we have multiple uh, customer touch points, and so this is where this then starts to get a bit more complicated in thinking about how we do this, is um, we interact with our customers across a number of different, what we're calling touch points, so everything from mobile, so you'll see the little Android symbol, to Windows phones, to Apple, to the website itself, to then people browsing, we've actually seen a massive shift, and again, think about this in the context of the data and the analytics we have, um, a massive shift onto uh, mobile platforms. And we're really seeing the way that people are using our site and interacting with us fundamentally shifting. Um, we, again, briefly touched on, um, you know, it's gone from very simple clicks and data and sort of very binary numbers that we were getting to more, you know, things like Facebook um, and uh, social media and those kinds of interactions. Well. So again, that presents a whole different raft of problems, uh, opportunities, uh, as we like to say in the commercial world, um, around our data, right? So just want you to think about the, 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 the complexity around that as we go through this. Um, that's what we are, okay? Um, 
because I'm speaking on the careers panel, um, and um, uh, one of the things I like to think about actually, and it, it, it's equally important, and again, for the, um, uh, one of his key things, that he, or one of the things he mentioned in his um, presentation was around the, the soft side of, of OR perhaps sometimes. And sometimes we forget about that, especially in the uh, commercial world when it's all about the cash, right? So at Hotels.com, we're actually very proud of who we are as well as what we are, right? Um, and so I just wanted to uh, talk about this. We've spent, um, say, I've been there and seen it evolve over years, and there are a few key elements to what we do and how we do things. And you'll see this as I present how we deal with the data, but I'll throw it up there for you to think about as we go through this. Enterprising is a key value that we have, okay? So the idea is, is taking something and trying something new. So testing simulations, right? You see where this is going. We like to think of ourselves as intelligent. Um, maybe that's a bit arrogant. Um, but what we what we do is we try and think of ourselves as you know not being refined and defined by where we are today and think about new opportunities and intelligence and different ways of applying different models and theories, which is why we can get to this. And um, fundamentally, we think of ourselves as supportive. Why is this important? Um, this go, should go inside and outside. This is linked to the theme of my presentation. Is we're here to support the customer, right? Aspirationally, travel is a very motivational um, and aspirational um, area. And so what we want to do is we want to support our customers in making that decision and having a lovely time and all those kind of things. But also importantly, uh, we want to support each other in the company as well. So you can see those three themes and you'll see as we as I go through. So I just want to throw those at you. Um, but now I'm getting into the presentation. Okay. Um, so... As I said, I've been there for a while, I've um, been at Hotels Up for a while, and we really think about analytics in, in a, someone, some of you may recognise this as a uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and you probably learned at some point, but actually we've changed it to the analytics hierarchy of needs. Um, and so uh, this is how we think about it, right? So we've, you know, we've evolved and we are evolving up this hierarchy of needs, um, and it's, it's been very interesting to be part of this. You know, we start at the base where we've basically got accurate, accessible data. Right. We then evolved into a place where we had dashboards and standard reporting. We then evolved to sort of more hypotheses-based projects and analysis. So you can see how it gets more scientific and more um, complex. Then we're really starting to test and learn and, and test out those hypotheses. So it's all well and good having these hypotheses, but unless you can test them, it's kind of a little bit pointless. Um, really then. We hope, uh, we like to think that we're kind of getting towards this higher end of the scale where we're looking at predictive analytics. So this is where, you know, we, we become uh, uh, more involved and, and we're hiring more and more people to look at some of the predictive analytics, some of the modelling. And then we're going to really, and I know that there's been a few presentations and talks um, over the last couple of days about um, data and algorithms and machine learning and big data and what we do with all that, right? So that's kind of where we are um, in our, uh, we're kind of going through this process. I hope we're at somewhere near the top is the aim. Um, we're getting there, um, we're not perfect, um, but that's what we're doing. And the idea from a commercial, uh, how is impacts from a commercial perspective? The idea is, is that we're going to increase our competitive advantage. Um, but also the challenge really is um, there's an increasing complexity of skill sets that are required, again, which is why I'm kind of one of the reasons why I'm here talking to you about this is, you know, What's great for you guys is that you have the, the, the grounding in, um, in something that's fundamental and something that is a core skill set for not just us, but I would possibly say a lot of uh, commercial companies out there. You know, we're going from more and more scientists and more and more sort of, um, uh, we're using more and more of the academic uh, learning to apply to our business environment. So it's just something to, again, bear in mind. Um, and again, touching on particularly, so getting into sort of, kind of the real meat of what I'm going to talk about today is um, analytics is equally about culture and people as it is about tools and process or even analytics. If you don't have the people and the culture in place and the processes, the analytics kind of doesn't really do anything because you've got no one to do anything with, right? So when we talk about and when we think about analytics as a whole, and my job particularly now is is really creating um, the three parts of that, um, or three pillars or three parts of that strategy, right? So my strategy is to, which I'll get to in a minute, um, um, my challenge is um, to support and enable running the business um, and driving business change through scalable and 
stable solutions uh, via the transparent process. So a bit of a mouthful. What that means is essentially the above, right? It's jo my job is to join together people, create culture, create a set of processes and rules, and then have the analytics tools um, and uh, platforms that are available to explore that information. So it's fun, I guess, <laughs> right? Uh, it's tough, but it's fun. But that's really what I'm about. So. What I want to do today is I'm going to actually pick on a particular part um, of our um, of, of my area that is, that illustrates kind of the, the concept around the people process and, and tools quite nicely. Um, the reason why I pick on this is because it also has a, a fairly solid grounding in um, so a lot of the science that you guys are uh, talking about in operational research and links nicely with that. I think um, again, huh, Pavel, I. Learn a lot. It was fascinating. Given the fact that it's so different to what I do, it was uh, very useful. But you know, talk about OR being the scientific approach to decision making. That's really what I'm talking about. So this, this we have what we call our testing program or IMBT program, and that's really all it is. It's taking the science behind um, uh, decision making and applying that in a commercial context. Okay, um, something all you guys I'm sure are familiar with. So, but again, the difference is is that. I get a real dynamic lab to play with. Everything all right? Thank you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me all right? Okay. I'll stop on Um So we, we actually have more of a dynamic lab, lab with our um, site. So um, what are the benefits of testing and how are we doing that? So really why testing is important to us? Fundamentally, we increase revenue, right? We're a commercial company, that's really what it's about, bottom line. Um, as much as we um, want people to have lovely holidays and so on and so forth, we're really about making money. It's executive, but that's what it is. Um, the other thing is is that um, we don't have to guess if we test, right? So um, we have an idea of democracy, and in fact, not even we don't even decide. Um, in our testing program, we actually let our customers decide. So we, yes, all right, we come up with the hypotheses to start with, but we actually then test them out with our real customers in real time and let them decide what they like. Sometimes we think they like really odd things and we'll go through some of that, but, you know, we go with it. One of the best, um, actually, slight digression, but one of the best stories around this one is, um, <laughs> is our, we tested a while ago on, our, on our, one, of our, one of our pages, one of our detailed pages, making the font really big, right? So we, most websites have a standard font of about sort of 12 or 14, you know, fairly small, but it has all the information, and then you've got a lot of information. We tested one summer, and this was probably about uh, three years ago. We tested one summer, right at the beginning of our We were like, what happens if we make this really big, right? What happens if, like, you know, we just kind of supersize it, right? <laughs> um, and we kind of, okay, well, you know, well, let's test it out. And this is right at the beginning of our testing program. We're like, okay, well, that's an easy thing to do. We can just change the font. So we changed the font and we, we pushed, um, you know, 20% of our traffic through. At the time, our CEO um, was away on holiday um, in Greece. Um, and being a typical commercial CEO doesn't really switch off. He was on, uh, on holiday with his family. My boss gets a phone call. Oh my God, the site is broken, emergency, man down, em disaster recovery, engage the process, we've got a problem, There's ma the font is ridiculous, it's massive, what do you, you know, panic, panic, panic. So we were like, oh crap. So we are like, oh okay, right, well, okay. Um, oh, we, and if it is broken, oh no, actually we've done it on purpose. It's like, what do you mean you've done it on purpose? You're mad. Um, and we go, well, technically we're not. And we actually showed him the results, and we actually went in and we had a look at the results. And... Um, we uh, had about 3x the conversion based on that, that thing. In terms of money, it's about $5 million a year, right? Uh, so actually, guess what? And that was on 20%. So I was like, actually, you can go back to your villa or wherever it is in the south of France that you're you know, at as a CEO, and don't worry, we just made you $5 million. So he hung up and was like, oh, okay. I know. But the thing is, is that we never, ever, ever would have tried that, right, um, if we hadn't been able to, to do this test and learn program. So, um, and it's been a massive change for us. Um, um, such a so, anyway, we, we live in an ideas democracy, we let our customers decide. Um, innovation is easier and less risky. The idea I've just described to you, it exactly is that, right? You know, it, it's, again, that's the <laughs> Pavel's example. 
we can innovate, we can make it up, we can try it and we can test it. Um, and because we're controlling the test, we know we kind of don't just make a change to our site. In the old days, I don't know how what the split of commercial versus academic here is, but in the old days you kind of used to redesign your site, throw it out, cross your fingers, and then hope everything went all right. We don't do that anymore. We kind of redesign our site, throw it out there, let 10% of people see it, and if it works, then ramp it up, right? Um, this is an interesting one. It's all about failing faster. The faster we can fail, um, the more we learn, and then the more we can apply. It's a very, very different shift um, to how we, you know, how traditionally as, as humans we, we think of this stuff, you know. We're about failing. The faster we fail, the more stuff we learn. Okay, so moving on to kind of, um, and sticking with the themes about the, you know, from, from th implementing something like, um, OR and decision making throughout the business. I'm sticking with my themes of people and culture, so and processing and tools. So we'll dig into people and culture. So we've set up on purpose a culture um, and a um, because every good uh, commercial organization has a strap line, you know, to be the best test and learn organization online. That's what we I basically target my team with and that's what they are there to do. Um, how are we doing that? We are utilizing every last drop of traffic to its maximum. <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. Um, it is trying to test as much as we can, as often as we can, to get the results that we can. So it's not being cautious about, okay, we'll only do one test, we'll only do two tests. Currently, right now, on Hotels.com, we are running 53 tests simultaneously, multi-varied tests. So we're really using the traffic, we're taking advantage of the fact that we are a global organisation to test this stuff out. Um, for profit maximisation protection, Told you already, we're going to be up front. We need to we need to maintain profit. There's no point in us testing stuff or rolling stuff out anyway that harms our profit and harms our pleasure because we have shareholders to keep happy, right? Um, so we have to do that. But then there's also a thing about uh, text ex execution perfection. We want to test. We want to be risky. We want to be innovative, but we need to do it within parameters. We need perfection around the way that we implement this process and, and, and so on, which I'll get to in a minute. So there is an element of perfection in the, and this is where the sort of the theory and the academics kicks into play and thinking about that in the context of, of these other two things. And again, supporting all this of our three who we are, so intelligent, enterprising, and supportive, you know, thinking about how we're good at the fundamentals, how we introduce testing into new areas. So just other than just testing products on the site, what else can we test? Can we test um, types of emails that we send out there? Can we test um, you know, anything basically. What can't we test actually is probably more the question. Um, also supportive, you know, we're, we're learning as we go. Um, also with people and culture, that, that one of the other key things that um, is important to us is you need to get support from the top down. And this is again, this will link into, um, and again, some of the presentations we've been talking about, um, you know, infographics and sharing data and how important that is. It's important because you need support from the top down to do something radical like testing. And as I say, our CEO could have shut us down, right? You could, it, like, you're all mental, what are you doing? Shut you down. So you need support and you need that risk-taking attitude from the top. But we all have a responsibility to also uh, nurture and create that culture as well. So, you know, looking at some of the infographics and some of those things that are part, it, it's important to get that message all the way through. And at hotels.com, we've been quite successful with that from our CEO, basically our investor relations um, conference like two years ago, pointing to testing and learning being a key part of our overall strategy. Um, you know, and that has its foundations in operational research. Right? Um, so this is going like all the way through the top, all the way to through these commercial leaders and their understanding you know, what it is about this that makes it special. Right? Um, all right, pro a bit into process, keeping on the time. Um, why you split uh, or multivariate testing? So um, one of the key things at Hotels.com is we actually use multivariate testing rather than split testing. Um, why? Well, these reasons. <laughs> what does that mean? Anyone heard of it? Well, I'm sure you've all heard of uh, you can't see the trees, for the, the wood for the trees. The trees for the trees, actually. Um, it's really about that, right? So. Testing lets us take a very rational scientific approach, which we all understand, right, um, to solve our business goals, right? Sequential testing in a commercial environment has a number of problems. Um, seasonality. Travel industry is massively seasonal. 
massively, massively seasonal. Okay, um, depending on where you, remembering we've got 73 countries all over the world, and um, depending on where they travel and who they travel with and what time of year and where they go, will massively vary from season to season. So it's really hard for us. So unless we run a test, if we're doing a, an A-B sequential test, we would have to run every test for a minimum of 15 months, right? Anyone see a problem with that? <laughs> right? Um, so, for that reason. The other reason is marketing activity. Um, we have all these commercial types out there thinking, you know, driving, as, as right, um, more and more and more people to our site. So, from day one to day two, or day, month one to month two, we're at any point investing different amounts of money in different countries. So, again, a good example is, uh, let me think, um, 12, 18 months ago, instead of 73 sites, we had 65, and instead of seven platforms, so we had a platform for Android, a platform for Apple, a platform for all of those, instead of those seven platforms, we actually had two, right? So we've exponentially grown. The number of people coming to our site has grown, so it's not the same. We're not in the same stable environment, so the volumes of traffic, again, shifted. So actually, if you're going sequential, your baseline is fundamentally shifting anyway. So Again, it's very difficult. Adding in all this, uh, the macro socioeconomic disasters that happen, um, that has a massive impact as well. You know, the weather, um, the snow, the cold weather in this country, brilliant for us, everyone wants to go away, right? Um, so, but we didn't have actually this time last year, I don't know if you all remember, but Easter was really warm. Um, and so it's very, very different, right? And so we really need to think about the process and the process that we employ to do this testing, and that's why we, we, chose, we choose the uh, multivariate uh, approach. Um, just so we're all clear, what we're talking about is we're essentially talking about running multiple A-B tests at the same time. So this is a very simple example. Um, we have a number of factors. So we have the module color, the complexity, the button color, the button size, the button message, and the heading text. Right? They could be treated as five individual tests, right, if you were doing the sequential. But if where we're doing the multivariate factors, we can actually combine those factors together, and now we have a little bit more efficiency in terms of when we can uh, get this through. The other key thing is remembering we work in a commercial organisation. The key is speed. We want to see as much money as fast as we can. Right? We have a you know we have targets to hit. Right? So this helps us get there. Um, this also then leads on to some kind of the, the, my next point, which is something to consider about, and this is where um, uh, where where Val talked about as well earlier. You can't replace numbers with intuition, and it, it it requires some level of thought behind it. If you are if you wait until you hit statistical significance for every single test and stability, you generally will be waiting a fair amount of time, especially if it's a test on a very small area of the site where the volumes are very low. Okay, so there is an element of making a decision from a directional result, and this is the one that you know all my stats guys get a bit shaky about, right? Because you know the numbers don't back it up. But what it is is about looking at where are we, where are we statistically significant, and where do we make that decision to to kind of bank that cash, basically, right? Because remember, the faster we bank that cash, the more money we have to spend to do more cool tests. You know, and the, and the same, same side is, you know, early changes in the test are not indicative of the ultimate result. And this is where this is quite interesting, this risk factor comes in, is that, um, you know, we had historically, when we were running these sequential tests, we had, you know, oh crap, this is looking really bad. Um, let's just switch it off because it's too risky, right? Too, you know, we're, we're dropping. Now we have, we kind of, a, now we're running sort of this multivariate test environment and we can choose how many people see each, each variant and so on and so forth. We can actually mix that around. We'll talk about tools in a minute. Um, we can actually reduce risk. And so where we do see, um, you know, early sort of volatility, we can actually hold our kind of, we can just make the decision basically to reduce the exposure to that test, reduce the risk, reduce the number of people seeing that, but then run it to see if it flattens out. Um, with it, and then that, for, that, that therefore reduces our risk overall um, uh, on that exposure. Okay, uh, moving on. So we've talked about people and culture. We've talked about uh, process. We also need to talk about tools. Um, and I, the reason I leave this to the last point is because it's dear to my heart as well. Um, and um, I very much feel that um, we need the right tools for the right job. Okay. 
So um, we, we all have um, hypotheses and ideas and we all have our favourite tools, right? We all specialise in this tool or that tool or whatever. But one of the key things to think about is making sure you're selecting the right tool or the right hypotheses or the right theory for the, for the right job. Don't be blindsided into kind of always going down the same way. And this is where our intelligence stuff kicks in, right? So it's very important because you can have a big impact. So we think a bit like this, right? So we have a, sorry, we have a, um, um, an axis that looks at the volume of the experiments and the complexity. Very simple model. And what we do um, is we actually bucket our tests. So from a tools perspective, we bucket our tests into different parts and different areas of this uh, uh, matrix. And depending on where they fall, so if I go through the type of tests, there's, there's big tests, right? So think of the types of tests, and I'll give you some examples. There's business logic, inventory and large. So what I mean by this is we will test, the um, uh, best example is um, alternative payment methods. In South America, uh, it's very common that uh, you pay for everything in installments. You don't pay up front, you don't pay, in, in, um, you don't pay up front at all. You pay for everything you <coughs> You buy a, your weekly shopping at Tesco's or the equivalent thereof. Um, and you pay in installments, okay? It's just how it's done. Fascinating, right? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and um, and um, you know, we're like, oh, kind of, this is a bit weird. Um, think about the complexity about how setting up how you take payment for a hotel that costs a hundred pounds uh, for a night. Someone books one night, and how you get that money back in installments and all that sort of stuff, right? Really, really heavily complex from an executional standpoint, right? There involves, you know, we have to sync up with banks, we have to sync up with payments, we have to sync up with credit agencies, that's blah, blah, blah. fairly complex. So it's a massive piece of business logic that goes on. So we have a particular tool that we use um, in order to be able to do this because we have to deal with the level of complexity. You take something like landing page, so content. So we can say, okay, well, instead of landing you on um, this page, we're actually going to create a new page and we're going to land you on this page. Best example I'll give you here is. Um, uh, when you come in through um, a search engine, for example, um, Google or whatever that might be, do we show you, um, I should not want to ruin my own thunder later, do we show you one version of the page or do we show you another version of the page? I have some interactive pieces at the end, so I need to make sure you're all awake before lunch. Um, so, hope you're paying attention. Um, I should have told you that up front, now you're all like, oh shit, I've messed it up. <laughs> um, okay, um, and then there's front end, right? So there's things that we talked about, about changing UX and UI elements. So changing the colour of a button, changing the size of the text. Um, all right. Oops, keep getting away. And then that, that's a different tool that we use. Then finally, there's actually some automated and targeting tools. So, you know, both of these, these two things I've talked about is, you know, we basically pick which bucket you're going to be assigned to, and we assign to that bucket and we run you through that test. There's also a kind of a type of testing out there that is automatically targeted. So based on previous behaviour, okay, so I came in and I looked at uh, Paris hotels, for example, being able to target me then with more Paris hotels. So, you know, we do it, we use another tool that says, okay, well, we know that this person looked at Paris hotels, but they actually didn't buy any Paris hotels. So let's show them a thing that says, hey, we've got a big discount on Paris hotels at the moment, right? We can do that. Yes, we can. It's scary. But it's a lot of fun. Um, so we do that, but we use an entirely different tool. And you can see that there's different levels of complexity, so therefore they're different tools. So again, it's not about a one-size-fits-all solution. We have to think about, and we have to be flexible, and we have to think about our skills. So again, on the careers panel later, but it's thinking about the skills that you guys have and thinking about everything is grounded in the same theory and the same framework, but thinking about how you apply that is a different dimension. Um, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is a, you're not really supposed to see it that well because it's got quite a lot of commercial extensive information on but that's okay. Um, uh, <coughs> this is um, taking it to the next level. So we've got the tools, we've got the, you know, we've got the process, we've been launching tests, we've decided we're doing multi testing. Um, we've got the test running, um, we've decided to do some risky stuff, um, we've got the tool, we've launched the test live, now we're all, right? Very, very important. Again, you've heard this all throughout, but this is this is actually something uh, in the commercial world that 
has had a lot of focus recently, which is about visualising data. So you, there's infographics and all sorts of things and data visualisation. But essentially it's about how you get, what tools you're using to get the information into the people's hands that can make the decision that can change the world. I guess if you like. Our little world anyway. Um, and so we very much have an investor. So this is, um, so part of my other group is, what we're doing is we are building uh, front ends to our data that allows non, remember, a lot of these tests that we're doing, they're non-stats people that are interested in the results, right? They're, they're, you know, they're, they're people that have never opened a spreadsheet in their lives. They're marketing guys. They decide whether the button is blue or green, right? That, that's what they do. And so what we need is we need a way to um, explain to these guys in a very simple way what the answer is, basically, um, without going into or with going into a relevant amount of information and detail about the, the methodology behind this. Because obviously we want to educate people, we want people to understand that you know why you can't turn a page from pink to green or, or whatever it may be, and, and what impact that has on consumers. So you need to translate that, and this is actually really hard. Um, and um, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to, tr to educate people and, and, and really make, make change to, to people that aren't traditionally, you know. A lot of people in our marketing team, perhaps, and I, I hope no one um, takes offense to this, but, you know, they, they didn't do stats at university. They didn't sit here and they didn't go to OR things and they don't understand it. But it plays a massive part because we're testing everything. We won't let them do anything on the site without testing it, right? So we're like, well, you can't actually change the site. You can't change the thing you own unless you test. And then go, well, the numbers say this, so you can't actually, you know, the good idea you have of, like, putting a big flashing banner up actually is proven, proven statistically that it's not the right thing to do. Trying to explain that to them and get them to kind of come along with it is really hard. So we've spent a lot of time building out a front end of to show, kind of try and get a balance between um, the stats um, and sort of the marketing view of things to, to explain those decisions and why they're making those decisions and inform the, the decision maker because at the end of the day, someone has to make that decision and someone has to be confident in taking that decision and making a change. All right, so keeping an eye on the time because I've got to do some questions and other questions, I believe. Um, it's now time for the interactive portion session. See or awake for lunch. Okay. So we're going to run some tests. So you guys are all very clever, um, as we all know. Um, and you're all Alice and you, you should know the answer. So I'm expecting 100% right, by the way. So I'm going to give you some quizzes. Which test one is the name of this game? Um, I feel like I should have like um, jazz hands or some flashing lights or something, but I don't. Um, all right. So we're going to go through a few tests that we've run. These are genuine tests on our site. And they're a bit older because legal won't let me show the new stuff, but that's okay. Uh, still relevant. A bit older. Um, and you're going to vote for which one you think won. And then I will tell you. And there is no prize other than that you get to have lunch. Um, if you don't get it right, you, none of you get to go for lunch. <laughs> Just saying, right? <coughs> okay. All right. So this is what we call our property details page. So um, on, uh, on the left. Um, yeah, on the left, you and so our property details page. I should give you some context. Is the page that we show to our customers that tells the detail about the property. So I think that's fairly straightforward. So we're starting with an easy one, warming you up. So which one of these two do you think converted better? Hands up for A. I don't know by my plasma emission, five percent. Yeah, about that, right? B. 95%. Alright, let's see. <laughs> so, 5% of you are going for lunch. The rest of you. <laughs> Alright, so. We have, we have to eat 20% more, is that right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, this is a case where we um, basically, where we had a completely new style and we, we tried it, right? And we were like, right, we're going to completely try this completely new style. And Completely radically different, and we yes, we're you know, marketing guys have spent a lot of time, usability guys done a lot of research. We're definitely sure that this is going to work, right? So we're going to throw it up there, and we're confident. But we're going to test it just in case we were wrong. <laughs> so what we did was we went back to the drawing board. So, all right, try a second time. Which of these converted better? Your A. Oh, so we just 
stick it all something to go with it. Okay, right, so about seven percent. B <laughs> two people, we can see I've got one percent. C just not sure my maths is about right, but yeah. Okay, right, eight percent. Alright, let's see. You're getting better, you're getting better. This is good, this is good. You're learning, which is brilliant. Alright? So yeah, C. Uh, we launched a new variant with alternative photos swung around. So all, so all we did differently, so look, this is what we did. We just swung it around. So instead of having the photos, I um, can't point enough, point it. So instead of having the photos here, we just put them along here. That was it. That's the only difference between those two pages. But, massive difference. Okay? All right. So this is something, and um, this is, this is actually taken on a life of its own in our in our company, um, and um, this plays into um, I'm going on a slight digression, but I think it's actually quite interesting and quite relevant because it's something that I've learned recently that I'd like to share with you. Um, this is really about um, what we're now calling uh, social proofing. So some of you may be familiar with this context, but it's the the concept of taking um, and understanding the the social interaction um, with data and with numbers and, and pulling that into our research, right? So there's, there's um, I don't know if, 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 I've been doing a lot of reading recently around um, the impact of crowds and social, um, you know, with the, with the advent of social media and so on and so forth, it has a massive impact on our behaviour, right? So, you know, what we're now doing at Hotels.com, and we're trying to it was a theory that bubbled out this, this is the early days, but we're actually finding a significant significant amount of impact on looking at the um, motivational and social aspects of behaviour, and uh, again, touched on behaviour in your presentation, about and pulling that together with science. So we're actually starting to take into account the sort of more softer side of, of behaviour and pulling that in. And it, we're really at the early stages of this, and we're kind of working this through at the moment, but this was our first kind of eureka moment. So this is a big one for us. So on the property details page, uh, we tested with something that we called urgency at the time. So variant A is, we just showed the property details page, there was no, as you saw just then, okay? Option B was we showed this pop-up that said, most recent booking for this hotel was nine hours ago. In that corner, you can see it right there. And C says, this hotel has been booked four times in the last 24 hours, okay? So, I'm gonna ask for votes, given I've given a preamble, I'm hoping that Someone's vaguely right. So, any votes for A? <laughs> um, votes for B? Okay, about 30%. Okay, C? Okay. Alright. I'm sure some people put their hand up twice. You can't do that. <laughs> um, Alright. C. So, most of you are right. So, more of you are getting to go for lunch. This is good. This is good. Alright. So, okay, on this, in this case, we're, we're getting better at it. But you can see, like, how you, when you start testing, you fail at the beginning, but you get better and better and better because you understand the motivations. And so, this is a really key part of it. And one more, and then I will uh, let you ask questions slash go for lunch. Um, now you're really good at this. I'm going to give you a complicated one, okay? Which of these variants was the most attractive to customers, right? And then gave us the most, and gave us the most upside. All right. This is the control. So this is actually our search results page. Okay. So when you come to our site and you look for New York hotels, it's actually different to this now, but uh, it was this. this was it. Okay. This is the control. All right. So that's what we controlled against. This is variant one. The difference here is we've made the um, search the focus. So you can see this is now big. So if I flip back, all right. So we supersize that. Okay. That's variant one. Search focus. I'll ask you to vote in a minute, so I'll click back through. Variant two is no listing. So again, the difference here is you can see the featured hotels in the control. There aren't any featured hotels in variant two. Okay? But the search is the same. Variant three is a panoramic image on the left hand side. Um, and then some benefits of why you should book with us. Okay? So a lot less functional, but a bit more aspirational maybe. Then there's a similar thing, panoramic image, but map. So we've got maybe a combination between an aspirational image and a functional map. Okay. Now, whew, I'm glad that didn't pop up, so I really ruined it. Um, so, we're going 
going to go for some for some votes. Right? This is your last vote. Make it count. So who's going to vote for the control one? Okay. One percent. Variant one: the search focus. This is big stakes, guys. This is big stakes. Make sure you get it right. Okay. Ten percent. Uh, no listings. Okay. Panoramic image plus benefits. Okay, so I think that's that with that one, two is the winner. Moment. Panoramic image with a map. I'm making it hard. <laughs> We're all evenly splitting across everything. All right. Okay, you ready? I would do a drum roll. But um, I'm not musically inclined, so I won't. Um, the winner was. <laughs> I'm very into. Big search module and no listings. I think there were a couple of you guys that got it. So, yes, congratulations, those of you that won it, um, and uh, the prizes that you get to ask the first question. So, that's really the end. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of information I realise in there, and I've sort of crushed it in. Um, but that's it. So, five minutes for questions? Or less, can we much? try and figure out why one variant beat the other variant to help guide future testing? Yeah, um, you mean on the, um, on sort of the, well, so there's a few things, right, that we do. When, when, when one, one test wins over another, there's a few things that we do. I mean, wherever you revert to that winning uh, test, we then will then iterate on that. If we've done a big, I think the thing is, is that we try and tend to do smaller changes incrementally rather than one big change. Like the days of where we, you know, had an entirely new search page or an entirely new, we've actually removed, right? Because it was very hard to find out. Okay, well, why? Why is that one better than the other? Um, so actually, we're now doing more and more smaller incremental tests, so it, it actually can point better. The other piece is that we actually spend a lot of time, um, money, and so on and so forth in um, uh, qualitative research. So we actually spend a lot of time with our customers doing focus groups and understanding what their motivations are as well. So there's a combination of a few things. Again, I guess back to the theme of my presentation, you can have the hard stats, but you need all the other things that go around it as well. So that's, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm.